The reality is we don't have a lot of people who are still using injection drugs. Uh, we do have people who are using other drugs or alcohol, and I, I don't feel that that's a reason to withhold therapy for someone. There's no study to say that they don't do as well. In fact, there are studies that show they, that they do as well. Um, if you get rid of the disease, you may prevent them from spreading it. Um, I don't think it's my role as a physician to make a judgment, a moral judgment based on that. I think my role as a physician is to care for someone and to eradicate the virus. We don't withhold diabetic treatment. We don't withhold hypertensive therapy from people who use drugs. So why should I withhold this therapy? Some would disagree. Many would agree. Um, in New York State, uh, they all agree because luckily the Department of Health and the Attorney General have made it such that they have to. I don't think that they should be in a, in a place uh, that would be putting out any morals. Right? We, we aren't here to judge patients. We are here to treat patients. Right? And I, I think there, that's a line that we cannot cross. You know, we are there as healthcare providers, no matter which uh, aspect of healthcare we're in, is to actually care for people. So uh, most insurers will pay in New York. Now, that's not true in the rest of the country. Um, but in New York, they will. Right, the problem is most of the people that have the disease have already been treated because they knew and they were waiting. And so now it's a function of identification. We think that five to seven million people have the disease and it's most common in the group that was born between 1945 and 1965, the so-called baby boomers. There are initiatives now for screening. Uh, the CDC has recommended everyone in the country born between those years be checked once. The United States uh, Preventive Task Force Services have made the same uh, recommendation. Uh, several states, including New York, have a law which requires the offering of screening to, by primary care providers to all people born between those years and everyone in the hospital as well who aren't in intensive care units or emergency departments. So we're beginning to see an uptick in people who are newly identified. But I think it's very important, although this is the group that's targeted for screening, we also have to check people that have risk factors. anyone who's used intravenous drugs, anyone who's used cocaine nasally, anyone who had a blood transfusion in the United States before 1992, anyone with a tattoo, anyone that had body piercings other than ears. I mean, there are lots of potential risks, and I think it's our job to take a good history and find out if someone has a risk, if they fall out of that age group where, recommend, where treatment, or I'm sorry, where screening is recommended Right? and mandated in some states. If you were to go and think about potential risk factors, there are a lot of them. Right? Nail salon, the law in many states is that you have to bring your own equipment and either leave it in the nail salon or take it home. That's done because of hepatitis C and the risks of small amounts of blood getting on the equipment and then using it on someone else. And so there are lots of potential risks. Having said that, I don't want to scare anybody. You know, but amongst the baby boomer population, as many as 4% may have the disease. It's a big number. You know, and amongst young people, we're seeing a lot you know, related to tattooing, body piercings, and other behavioral um, issues. Prevention is very important. The only way to prevent disease is risk factor modification. Uh, most of the older folks got it from using IV drugs, using cocaine, getting a tattoo, or uh, getting injections from their doctors years ago when we didn't use all disposable equipment. Uh, so you can't change that population. Uh, they were exposed, but you can educate the younger population to prevent disease acquisition. Really Northwell's response to the liver disease epidemic, right? because it's rampant in the area that we serve amongst the people that we serve. It set up a separate division of liver diseases. Uh, which spans multidisciplines, so medicine, surgery. We have pathology, radiology, oncology. We have a center for liver diseases, the Sandra Atlas Bass Center, across the health system. We're expanding our access by hiring more liver doctors and nurse practitioners, uh, increasing what we do as far as research. We've always been a large clinical research program. Um, we're switching focus from hepatitis C to fatty liver and hereditary diseases now. Uh, we're bringing in surgeons to do both 
uh, non-transplant liver surgery and eventually uh, liver surgery. Uh, we're in the process of doing a lot of education around the area so people can understand what liver disease is so it can be identified. And we're opening a new building, uh, which opens officially August 15th of this year and we have a ribbon cutting September 30th. So Northwell is really in the forefront of approaching uh, the liver disease epidemic in our area. We're going to have the only liver disease building in the tri-state area. And so it's really, again, extraordinarily exciting for us who care, um, extraordinarily exciting for Northwell itself and most importantly for the patients that we serve and their families. It's a great time to be a hepatologist. Uh, you know, there's so much has happened. It's a fast-moving field. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of work out there, um, both from the, the treatment and the educational standpoint. And it's really one of the areas in medicine where growth is exponential. I mean, just take hepatitis C uh, itself. Uh, it's a disease that went from newly discovered in 1991 to medications that can lead to almost complete eradication, cure by 2014. And I'll ask you, because I don't know, name any other disease that has gone from identification, discovery, to cure in that short period of time. It's changed everything that we do. Therefore, it's made us very excited that we can do it in other conditions.